Hello, Nansen Explorers. Today, I'm going to show you how you can inspect Wi-Fi in Nansen uh, using some of our dashboards. Um, I'm going to show you three dashboards specifically. So the first one is a Wi-Fi specific dashboard. So it has some metrics that are really tailored to uh, Wi-Fi as a token. So the first thing I want to show you First of all, you can find this by just literally uh, searching for Wi-Fi in Nansen up here. It should come up. I'll also put a link in the description. It's basically dashboard number 153. So you can see the top Wi-Fi farmers. So these are uh, people who have been um, farming yield um, and they've been using the different pools. Uh, which at this uh, time of recording no longer uh, are actually yielding any new Wi-Fi. But you can see how much Wi-Fi they have claimed in total. So each row here is a specific wallet. And you can also see the distribution over the different pools. Um, and so you can see some of these addresses focused exclusively on one pool, like this guy. 100% uh, from pool three, which I believe was the governance pool. Um, and then you see other ones that have a more kind of equal distribution across the three different pools. For example, this guy, the fourth largest Wi-Fi farmer. Um, you can also click through and get some details on each specific wallet with regards to Wi-Fi. I'm going to show you that a bit later. Uh, you can also see the address in, in Ether scan over here on the left. So you might ask, where did the Wi-Fi go that people farmed? So obviously some of it was held um, by those farmers, but you can also see which addresses received Wi-Fi tokens from the wallets that were farming Wi-Fi. And so maybe not surprisingly, the top address that received Wi-Fi tokens, almost 25,000, uh, in th these are gross amounts, so they could be, you know, going into this address, going out again, and then back in. We're counting the, the total volume going into these addresses. So that was uh, the balancer exchange proxy, which is kind of, yeah, it's a proxy for for balancer. Um, Twenty five thousand went into that. You can also see the fee rewards, um, not so surprising either, which is where you can stake your Y fee to get rewards. Um, the third largest is one inch. So that's probably people selling Wi-Fi um, for ETH, uh, stable coins or other tokens. And then you see Uniswap, specifically the Wi-Fi wrapped Ether pool. Uh, you can also see a few other things. Uh, so we have one wallet that we've labeled the Wi-Fi whale. You can see some people who use ENS names. Uh, so you can maybe guess who those people might be. In addition, you can see how many wallets are currently uh, holding Wi-Fi and how many have held them uh, in the past. So you can see there's a there's a trend of increasing the number of wallets holding Wi-Fi, but it has been stagnating a bit in the last few weeks. But the first week uh, was was quite dramatic um, with uh, some days, basically almost a thousand new wallets coming on board holding Wi-Fi. All right, down here, you can see another table which shows the Wi-Fi stakers. So these are people who have locked up Wi-Fi tokens in the fee rewards contract. And this is quite useful because if you just go to Etherscan and you look at the top balances for Wi-Fi, you obviously won't see the stakers because the tokens are not sitting in their uh, wallet anymore. And so here we've calculated how much Wi-Fi these wallets have deposited into the fee rewards contract. So you see the top one that we've just labeled Wi-Fi whale has a pretty impressive balance of nearly 2000 Wi-Fi tokens that they have locked up for fee rewards. And the next on the list has about a third of the amount. So just pretty big difference. You can see a few like ENS uh, labeled addresses here as well. Um, we automatically just pull out all the ENS names from um, from the smart contracts related to to ENS and the events uh, surrounding those. Uh, so we don't target any wallet specifically. We just literally pull uh, all the ENS labels there, and that can be quite useful for understanding a bit 
who these wallets are and also recognizing them over time when you see different charts, different tables. All right, so this is the Wi-Fi dashboard. There's also a link over here which says you may also like Wi-Fi in token god mode. So we're going to jump over to that next. So if we go to this one, it's going to take you to another dashboard called token god mode. And this is actually the most popular dashboard in Nansen at the moment. A lot of people get hooked on this dashboard. Uh, you don't have to only look at Wi-Fi. You can look at uh, loads of other tokens in this and you get the same stats um, and charts, metrics, tables uh, up when you input the token of your choice. Uh, by the way, if you're missing a token here, you can simply request it. It's very easy. You just put in the Etherscan link to the token and then most of the time we'll add it uh, within an hour if we're online or within a day if we're not online. All right, so what does this token uh, god mode dashboard show? So the first thing it shows is tokens on exchanges. And this is generally quite useful to know because you want to understand the liquidity situation and the, the supply side distribution across exchanges for any token uh, that you are you know, investing in or trading. So first of all, you can see that 5.6% of the total Wi-Fi supply is sitting on exchanges. That's across all the exchanges that we track. You can see how this number has changed over time on this red line. So here it's showing in absolute terms the number of tokens. Um, you know, assuming that the total supply is, is fixed, that line will show exact, will look exactly the same if you're doing percentage or absolute numbers. So the trend you can see here, it sort of peaked on July 22nd. And since then it's been going down, which might actually explain some of the positive price action for Wi-Fi because simply Wi-Fi is becoming more scarce uh, in practice on exchanges. It's harder to come by it. And so people are paying more to get access to it. Um, Dex traders is another complementary segment that we track, um, which is basically all wallets that have engaged in Dex trading. And so very often these complement each other. In this case, they do as well. They were both growing in the first week because of yield farming. So there was Wi-Fi kind of flowing into a bunch of different wallets. And then they sort of branched off when you didn't get any more Wi-Fi tokens from these pools. And the DEX traders kept kind of, you know, hodling the tokens, it seems. Um, but the exchanges did not get more inflow. So this is quite bullish. Uh, you know, none of this is investment advice, obviously. But it does seem quite bullish in terms of the hodling activity uh, around Wi-Fi. And so here you can see also the specific uh, exchanges and decentralized exchanges that hold Wi-Fi. So Balancer was a big one because it was involved in some of the uh, yield farming that was going on initially. Uh, now it's gone down quite a bit since those uh, yield farming pools have exhausted their tokens. Uh, Poloniex is currently actually the largest exchange in terms of holding Wi-Fi. Um, it's a centralized exchange, but they've been adding a lot of DeFi tokens lately. Uh, you see Uniswap here, FTX, another uh, centralized exchange, DexBlue, which I believe is a decentralized exchange, uh, etc. So you can see how a lot of these, the, the liquidity situation has, um, has uh, changed over time. Um, and you can see in this table, if you want something that's a bit more easier to process, just the hard numbers, you have the balance here on each exchange. This is aggregated across multiple wallets, right? Like several Uniswap pools, several balancer pools. Uh, and even for centralized exchanges, we track the deposit wallets of, of users as well. So it, in some cases, we're talking about millions of addresses. Balances, you see the change over seven days. And you can see how many days since they first received their uh, Wi-Fi tokens. All right, so that was tokens on exchanges. Notable wallets and transactions. This is uh, trying to focus on specific wallets. So above, we were looking at exchanges at in aggregate. So that could be multiple different wallets kind of uh, pooled together. Now we're drilling down to specific addresses. And so each row in this table is an address with the nonsense labels that we have. 
so you can see the change over seven days. Uh, the pools, not surprisingly, have the largest change because, you know, there's been Wi-Fi flowing out of those contracts um, through the yield farming programs. Uh, also, the balancer, two different balancer pools um, have, have had an outflow of Wi-Fi tokens. You could, you know, click Etherscan links over here to look at the specific addresses in Etherscan if you want as well. Uh, it's useful to kind of jump back and forth between Nansen and Etherscan. So, Nansen kind of helps you surface, you know, what should you be looking at? What's interesting? What's the signal in all this data? And then Etherscan can be quite useful as a kind of microscope to look at specific addresses, uh, specific transactions, et cetera. So one cool thing you can do here is you can click the column and then it will sort it uh, based on, you know, in this case, which addresses have been sending out tokens. You can see a couple of different ones here, some ENS names as well. Um, and then you can flip it around by clicking it again to see which ones have been receiving a lot of tokens. Again, some ENS names um, to look at. And you can also see some of the pools, the fee rewards, FTX, Poloniex. These are individual wallets, right? Again, so that's quite useful to understand the kind of accumulation that's happening. Where's the supply moving? Uh, you can also look at top individual transactions. So these are just the largest transactions that have been, uh, that have been processed by the network in the last seven days. So I don't need to explain this one too much. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. Um, and here you see the top balances. So who are the addresses that hold the most Wi-Fi at the moment? So the fee rewards contract has 24% of all the Wi-Fi tokens. Uh, that makes sense because you get rewarded by locking up your Wi-Fi in it. Uh, you can also see the change over seven days, 30 days. In this case, it's all positive. So it's basically been flowing into these wallets um, for every single one in net. Um, you can see the gross numbers as well on how much they've received, how much they've sent. You can scroll over here, see the days uh, since first received, also the date, the uh, specific date that they, and actually the time of the day since they received their tokens. Um, there's a little link to a wallet profiler here, and I'll get back to that because that's the third dashboard we're gonna look at in this video. Uh, but I just wanna show you at the bottom as well, there are two more sections. This hodler segments, which shows the seniority of wallets. So how long have they actually held their tokens uh, in different buckets? So these ones have held them or they received their first ones less than a week ago. And these guys um, less than a month or between seven and 30 days. This is the same chart that we saw in the first dashboard, just the number of hold, uh, people holding or not, wallets holding Wi-Fi. Um, and then you have the Dex trades, which is pretty cool. It shows an aggregated view of all the DEX trading activity for this token. So it shows the latest price in DAI um, for the token that we have observed on the network, and it calculates the total market cap by looking at how many tokens have been minted. So this is not circulating, it's just the total amount of tokens that have been minted multiplied with the token price, and that gives a market cap of 115 million uh, in this case. You see the price against Ether, that's the blue line, per day, and you see these bars are uh, the DEX volume. So I wanna make a note here to say that we track DEX trades because there's a lot of wash trading on centralized exchanges, as you know. Uh, and so we find that there's more signal in the DEX trades, actually. Uh, so there are plenty of examples. Uh, I think I've shown you some in a, in a separate video on Kyber Network, for example, where you can see how the volume sometimes spikes a lot. But if you look at other centralized exchange based data, you might see very flat curves or flat volume numbers because there's so much wash trading that like all the signal gets washed out. You can look at the latest DEX trades. This is a table that shows individual DEX trades for different DEXs, Uniswap, Balancer, what have you with the makers and takers and then imputed with labels so you can see specifically you know who are the addresses that are making these trades 
And so you can click through that. A lot of this is um, Uniswap balancer pools. Uh, so if you click through it, you might be able to find something that's more interesting. Let's see, we find an ENS address, for example. These are different pools. Here you see, for example, someone who has been buying this, some interesting ENS names here. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty long list. We should probably cut how long that, that string can be. It has a lot of different ENS names. Um, anyway, so that's Dex Trades. Um, so the last thing I want to show you is, so we've looked at the Wi-Fi specific project board. We've looked at this token God mode, which you can pretty much look at for any token. And the last thing I want to show you is you can even drill down to specific addresses. So if you just pick one of these, let's say you pick this one here, uh, you can click through on this wallet profiler. And when I click through on this, it's going to show us um, a specific view for this wallet and this token. So it's quite useful to understand, you know, have they been accumulating it? Where did they get the token? Where had they sent it to, etc. So you can see this is uh, what we've classified as a medium dex trader. That's just based on the number of dex trades they make. It means they've made between 10 and 500 dex trades. If you're above 500, you get classified as a heavy dex trader. If you're below 10, you're classified as a casual dex trader. So they have 615 Wi-Fi tokens. You see the balance over time. This is per day to make it a bit easier to process. And then you can see something pretty cool here, which is where did they get these tokens? Uh, again, these numbers are gross numbers. So uh, the total volume incoming, the total volume outgoing. It seems like they've received a lot of their Wi-Fi tokens from the Yearn.Finance entity. In this case, it's actually the fee rewards contract. You can see it down there because that's the largest transactions with the labels. Um, so Yearn.Finance is a, is a big source for them. Um, and then also Balancer, DexBlue, and some unknown ones. Uh, so those are addresses that we haven't classified or associated with specific entities. On the outgoing funds, you can see, again, urine.finance. So since these are gross numbers, it indicates that this is a wallet that's been depositing YFI into the fee rewards contract, the urine.finance fee uh, rewards contract, and then withdrawing them again. So back and forth. That's why you see kind of a large slice um, being associated with urine.finance. But the other entities, Balancer, they've probably been either providing liquidity or or selling some tokens. Um, Dex.blue, they could have been could have been selling tokens there as well. And one inch exchange, uh, definitely selling tokens. Uh, at least as far as I know, that's the only thing you can do with the Wi-Fi tokens there. I could be wrong, but most likely selling it. Um, in fact, you could test that hypothesis and just click through this and find. Hey, where is the actual one inch exchange? Here we go. 10 Wi-Fi tokens to one inch exchange. And we have a convenient link to the Etherscan transaction. And so you can see here, what did they do? They executed a swap of 10 Wi-Fi for 73.3 Ether. So yeah, they sold some Wi-Fi. But mostly they're holding, it seems. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. We looked at three things. We looked at the Wi-Fi specific uh, dashboard, which you can access by literally just writing Wi-Fi here. Um, we also looked at token god mode. Again, you can search for it. I'll put all the links in the description as well. Um, and the last one is the wallet profiler for token, which is in beta mode, but you can still use it. You can input any address here. You can input any token, so you could look at how this uh, address has been transacting other tokens as well. And that's it. Hope this was useful, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.